A daughter who was given up for adoption brings her biological parents back together in our drama now, Second Chance. This morning, having a muffin down the street. I need to start the siren and get to the hospital. In labor? I mean, I can't believe it. Just like that. about to become a grandmother. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you have any idea how ancient that makes me feel? I am a nervous wreck. You know how far apart our contractions are? No, I'm sure she's fine. Did you remember that Queen Anne Low boy? You didn't. $900. Oh. We'll sell it for twice that before the week's over. And instead of... You've got a granddaughter, Barbara. <laughs> oh, uh, Dawn sent me to get you. She really wants to see you. Okay, okay, come here. <laughs> oh, that's nice. awesome. go, Dad. Thank you. Oh, honey. Uh, Do you want to hold her? Of course. Yeah. 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 I know. <laughs> you never told me about this? About what? What it's like to hold your first baby in your arms. I didn't know it was possible to love someone so completely, so instantly. Do you remember that feeling? Of course I do. <laughs> She's beautiful. So after all these years of, of dead ends, of, of being passed from one agency to another, you ever been tempted to just give up hope? I don't know. Every once in a while. Valerie, do me a favor. Don't give up hope just yet. I have somebody I want to introduce you to. Your son. Oh. <laughs> again for at least two hours. Of course, you know, the movie may last longer than that. I mean, maybe you should just call the theater and just find out. It's just a comedy, Don. It's not Lawrence of Arabia. There's breast milk in the refrigerator, just in case. And if she won't take the bottle, you can just... Honey, we're gonna be fine. Morgan and I are gonna be just fine. Never let me take you up on an offer of free babysitting again. Scott, it wasn't that heavy. <laughs> Goodbye, sweetheart. Grandma's gonna take good care of you. What's this? Barbara Colvin. Postmark Boston, 1968. Must have fallen out of the desk. Wow. Well, it's 28 years. Who's it from? It's just, just an old um, tax form. Listen, you better get going. You're gonna miss this movie. She won't go to sleep? You can try just, just giving her some warm milk. Go. <laughs> I know how to handle a baby. Come on, Don. She'll be fine. Bye, honey. Bye. <laughs> Nope. 
Snow's right. Sure. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna go to my game. All right. Thank you for helping with the table. Mm -hmm. See ya. most important letter I've ever received in my life. I can't believe I just lose it like that. Well, maybe you didn't lose it. Maybe you just hit it on yourself. Though we cannot tell you the name of the adoptive parents or their whereabouts, please be assured that your little girl is part of a warm and loving family. It hurts just as much to read it today as it did then. And I sure would like a drink about now. <laughs> I know you would. Have you shown it to Don? Barbara, don't you think she and Jeff have a right to know? Why? So they can spend the rest of their lives wondering about somebody they're never going to meet. Brenda there hasn't been a day, not a single day, that I haven't thought about her or worried about her. Maybe you should try to find her. I'm serious. I gave her up. Besides, the records are sealed. Maybe you can do something about that. I bet she'd like to find you. Oh, yeah. Sure, she's dying to meet the people who didn't want her enough to be her parents. Oh, cut it out, Barbara. You've been beating yourself up now for the last 30 years, and it's really starting to annoy me. Ren, things are pretty good right now. I mean, they're better than they've been in a long time. I have a beautiful new granddaughter. I have a business I enjoy and a big sister that keeps me in line. I'm happy. I mean, I'm not totally happy, but I'm good. And I don't want to mess that up by going out and searching for something I'm never going to find. Don't give me that look. Yes, Boston, please. The Louise Chadway home. Well, yeah, it used to be on Palm Ave in Brookline. It was a long time ago. I, I don't know. No, nothing, huh? No, that's all right. Thanks. Is Deal in yet? Yep, he's here. And I called Senator Lindley's office. His plane is in the air. Oh, good. Fruit basket. Excellent work. So, Lori, you're finally filling that out. Yeah. Oh, I figured if I'm going to have kids, I should find out who my birth parents are. You know, in case there's some strange family disease or something. Wait, 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 wait. Having kids? Does this mean he's asked you to marry him? Well, Roy's not the type to actually drop to his knees and pop the question, but, uh... There's a definite drift in that direction. Oh, Lori, that's so great. Well, don't get excited. He hasn't asked me yet. In the meantime, we have a $1,000 a plate fundraiser to pull up. Have a seat, please. Would you like a cup of coffee? No, thank you. How can I help you? Well, um... A long time ago, I had a, a baby a baby girl, and I gave her up for adoption to the Louise Chadway home. And uh, they're out of business now. I, I thought perhaps their files might have been transferred here. Yes, we have those records. What are you looking for, Mrs. Colvin? I just wanted to know how she was doing to see if she was all right. I'm sorry. We can't give out information of that sort. They must have told you that at the time. No, they, they did. Just thought maybe things had changed somehow. No, afraid not. Can you tell me if she's ever tried to find out anything about me, requested any information or anything? If she wanted to find you, she would have filled out a form to petition the court to unseal the records. I don't see anything like that in the file. So she's never really expressed any interest at all. Well, she never filed the form, Mrs. Colvin. 
What is it that you want, Mrs. Colvin? I don't know. Do you want to find her? Yes. Very much. There's not a whole lot I can do. The initiative has to come from her. She's the only one who can petition the court to unseal the records. What I can do is make a note in the file that you've expressed interest in finding your daughter. That way, if she ever does inquire, she'll know you're looking for her, too. Okay? Hi, boy. That's a nice surprise. Hope you didn't mind me letting myself in. Are you kidding? Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Roy, a Bell Deal is the worst candidate ever. I mean, he's at the fundraiser with an entire ballroom filled with people who want to give him money. People I spent weeks getting there. Oh, and he's too proud to even hint that they might want to contribute to his campaign. He says, he says, Ooh. well, where I come from, people do not put their hand out and ask for money. Really, I said, well, where you come from, I guess people don't run for office because that's... Um, this is my adoption form I've been carrying around for a year. You need to send it in? Uh, as soon as I work up the nerve. Really? Well, that's great. You think so? Yeah, yeah, I do. You know, the minute I send this in, the process starts and the courts unseal my records, and, uh, I can't hide, I can't go back, ever. You know, I find out who my parents were and why they didn't want me, and I don't know if I can handle that. Here. You will? No question. Hello. Yes. I guess I remember you, Mrs. Braddock, but of course I still do. I call you. Hey, <laughs> thanks. Oh. All right, yeah. But do you know do you know do you know when? I mean, do you have any idea when she No, I'm fine. I'm fine. Absolutely. Absolutely. No, thank you very much. Thank you. Barbara? What's wrong? What happened? My uh, daughter would like to meet me. Your daughter? fundraiser. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy for you. Oh. Isn't that odd? I mean, we're looking for each other at the same time. Isn't that strange? I, I feel so close to her and I have never even met her. You have to tell Don and Jeff. Yeah, I know. Why'd you feel you needed to keep it from us? I don't know. Thing I wasn't proud of, that's for sure. And it just happened to me so long ago. Well, now it feels like it just happened to us. This must have been horrible for you, worrying about her all these years. I wish you would have told us, Mom. We could have helped. I know, and I'm sorry. Jeff, what... I I'm okay. I'm, I'm fine with it, Mom. Are you angry with me? No, I'm not angry. I'm just, uh... Wow, I'm just freaked out, you know. I mean, I'm 26 years old. I'm now being told I've got this other sister. It's it's a lot to take in, all right? I understand. I'm not really sure you do, Mom. Come on, Jeff. Give her a break. I mean, this is exciting. 
I've just always wanted a sister. I think it's great. We can no, no, it's weird in, in, in a good way. Come on. You know, when I was little, I would um, fantasize that I'd be walking down the street or in a mall or something, and there you'd be, and I would know you, you know, just by looking. But I've been very lucky. I'm very, I've been very happy, and my parents are great. My dad's um, an oceanographer at Scripps, and my mother's a copy editor. Although she didn't work when I was growing up because she wanted to stay home with me. But anyway, tell me about your life. Tell me about you. Well, ugh, it's been up and down like everybody else's. I, uh, I've made some mistakes, some real whoppers. I married a man I didn't love. I drank too much. And... But that's, that's over now. It's been over for quite a while. You seen anybody now? No, you know, I kind of reached a stage where I think I've gone beyond all that. Huh. Yeah. I'm in the need for it, you know. I wish I could go beyond that. <laughs> I thought you were said you were serious about somebody. I'm serious. The problem is getting him serious. He's, he doesn't have any gumption. You know what I mean? I know that one. Would you love my father? It seemed like it. It seemed like it at the time. You know what? My family is going to think I took you to Paris to talk. <laughs> <laughs> um, everybody's waiting at my house to meet you. You ready to meet them? Yeah. They're here. Hi. Hi. Hi I'm Dawn. <laughs> I'm Marie. <late>. Hi. <laughs> Is this Jeff? No, this is my husband, Scott. Hi, Scott. How are you doing, are you? This is Jeff. Oh. Hi, Jeff. It's nice to meet you. Hi. How are you? And this is your Aunt Brenda. And Hi. that is your niece, Morgan. <laughs> Baby, she's beautiful. Hi. Can I hold her? Of course. Hi, baby. Hi. Oh, I, I, uh, I'm afraid i got to get back to work. So soon. And we're pretty short uh, handed today, Mom. But you're going to be around for a while, right? Yeah. So we'll uh, have a chance to talk later. Mm hmm. I'm looking forward to it, Jeff. Getting to know you. Absolutely. So plain and sturdy. Mm, it's your New England heritage. You come from a long line of plain and sturdy people. I don't know if your family was that thrilled about me last night. Why would you say that? 
Well, Jeff seemed a little... I don't know. No, Jeff... That's just Jeff. Mm -hmm. Takes him a while to get used to things. You haven't asked me about it yet. Do you want me to? It might be hard to understand what it was like in New England in 1968. Things were still quite proper and rigid. The kind of girl I was just didn't behave the way I did. And of course, there was nothing that could have prepared me for Larry. We met in an English class my second year in college. He was a few years older. And I don't know what it was exactly, but his eyes, his smile something but all of a sudden the rules just didn't apply <laughs> so you can imagine the reaction of my plain and sturdy family when they found out i was pregnant larry and i thought we could handle it we talked about getting married and we went looking for an apartment but we didn't have any money and everything we saw we could afford was just dreary and horrible I just couldn't do it, Lori. We were too young, and, and, and we hadn't lived much. And Most of the time I was pregnant, I was in this place, the Louise Chadway home, for proper girls like myself who'd gone astray. It was an easy delivery. You weighed seven pounds, 14 ounces. Was he there? Larry drove down to see me every weekend when I was in the home. I didn't want him at the delivery. I think he was actually relieved when I told him that. But he saw you. He, he saw you the next day and he thought you were so beautiful. But you never saw him again after that. We never meant to not see each other again. It just sort of happened. We did what we thought was best for you, Lori. That's all either one of us were thinking about. You have to believe that. Well, I hope you're hungry. I made some lentil soup. I just have to heat it up. Sounds perfect. Yeah, some French bread, some hot tea. Barbara, I want to meet him. I want to meet my father. Well, of course you do. But you could arrange that, couldn't you? Well, I don't have his phone number. I don't even know where he lives. But you could find out. I suppose I could make some phone calls. You do know I haven't even spoken to him since you were born. It would mean a lot, Barbara. It would mean a lot to me if you could help me find my father. In. Why don't you look under a couple of rocks? I'm sure you'll find him. Don't start. Don't start. Well, excuse me. Just that I didn't appreciate him ruining my sister's life. Well, he was young. We both were. I don't even have a picture of him anymore. I mean, I burned him all years ago. Uh -huh. As I recall, he wasn't bad looking. No, he was not bad looking, as I recall. <laughs> Do you think Lori's up yet? Probably. Well, then we better get busy and find Mr. Wonderful for K-E-L-L-U-M. Uh-huh. Can you try, uh, try Cambridge? No, nothing, huh? Okay. No, it's all right. Thank you. There is no listing in Cambridge, Boston, or Lexington. Well, Larry doesn't live in Massachusetts, or even New England. It's highly possible. Larry's always wanted to travel. He's probably living in Europe or the South Seas or something. Didn't his father have a lawn business or something? Yeah, I installed lawn sprinklers. Where was it? I don't know. His parents moved when he was in college. Oh, it was Weymouth, Wakefield, one of those W places. Do you remember the name of the business? Um, Cascade something.
Wakefield, please. Cascade sprinklers or Cascade lawn care, something like that. Okay, how about Weymouth? No. Let me ask you this. How many suburbs or townships in the Boston area start with a W? Would you mind trying those, please? W seems to have been the favorite letter of the pilgrims. Yes, I think that's it. Thank you very much. Cascade Lawn and Garden Center in Weston. Yeah. Brenda. Brenda, no, I can't, I can't do this. Now, what do you want me to say? Well, I think we better use about... Oh, well, I'm afraid Richard Kellum passed away two years ago. Oh, I'm sorry. He's dead. He's dead? He's dead? His father. <sighs> um, would you like to talk to his son, Larry Kellum? He runs the business now. Oh, uh, well, yes, thank you. Just a moment. Larry, line two. You talk to him. Me? Why should I talk to him? Because I'm not going to. <clears throat> Hello? Uh, Barbara. Would you hold on a moment, please? You tell me what's going on here. He said I would find him. I didn't say anything about talking Give to him. Give it to me. Give it to me. Yep. Hello? Is this Larry Kellum? Yes, it is. Uh, hi. Um... Well, you don't know me, but my name is Lori, and I'm your daughter. Does she have any other kids? She has two, and a baby granddaughter. A granddaughter? Granddaughter. Wow. Wow. Mm. Mm. What about her husband? They were divorced a long time ago. Ah, oh, too bad. I guess neither one of us were too good in the marriage department. I never got over her, Laurie. Not ever. You, you should know that that it was all my fault. That I, I was the one who was scared. I was the one who thought I was gonna have this big, epic life, you know, traveling around the world, writing novels, having doomed love affairs with exotic women. <laughs> the idea of being a father and being a husband, I just couldn't see that. I couldn't, couldn't settle for that. So that's how I became a sprinkler salesman. What do you think, Philip? Is this a good time? Yes. Yeah? Okay. Give it to her. <laughs> this, this is from Dad and me. That's beautiful. Here, let me help you. Thanks. Well, it doesn't, doesn't exactly make up for 28 years, but maybe it's a start. I'm not sure what I expected, but I mean, I didn't know if I was going to be uncomfortable with him or if he'd be weird or something. But I really liked him. And he's so sweet to Philip. Oh, good. I'm, I'm glad you liked him. I'm really glad. He says he's never gotten over you. What? I'm just repeating what he said. 
How much is this butter mold? Oh, $200. 200 It's in excellent shape. And it's a rare pattern. Thank you. Not quite rare enough for $200. Half the butter mold in New England had that pattern on them. Don't you want to know what he looks like? Oh, I exhausted my curiosity about Larry Kellum a long time ago. He's got all of his hair, and he must work out because he's in great shape for a guy his age. Well, good for you. I want you to see him. I want all of us to get together. No, that's not going to happen. Why not? Lori, do you have any idea how long ago that was for me, my Larry Kellum phase? Come on, it was 1968. Sergeant Pepper wasn't even out yet. I would love to help you. But I'm not into time travel. It's dinner for one night. No, absolutely not. You owe me something, Barbara. I'm going back to San Diego in three days, and you owe me the experience of being in the same room with my mother and my father. And that's something I've dreamed about all my life, that one day we would all be together. We'll go see your father. Hey, we're meeting Mary Kellum. Mr. Kellum? Mm -hmm. Ah, yes, of course. Mr. Kellum is waiting for you. Uh, Stephanie, we'll take your coats. Thank you. If you'll follow me, please. to the three of us in a moment that I've dreamed about my whole life and I never actually thought would happen <laughs> and to the future not to the past cheers isn't she something <laughs> <laughs> I mean can you believe she's here it's it's like a Feels like a dream. Yeah. Like a strange, wonderful dream. Would you excuse me a moment? I just have to make a quick phone call. We have this really big press conference, and uh, I just have to double check a few things. Sure, take your time. She looks like you, I think. You think so? Yeah. yeah. Oh, she has your blue eyes. My blue eyes? What about your blue eyes? Well, she certainly has your persistence. <laughs> I was persistent in those days, wasn't I? Yes, you were. So tell me about Philip. Oh, Philip's a great kid. He, he spends most of his time with his mother, you know. He goes to a special school in, in Maine, and that's close to where she lives, but we get to spend a lot of time together. You, you know that... Yeah, I know. Yeah. Lori told me. What about yours? My kids are great. Yeah. Jeff works for the police department. And, uh... And Don just had a new baby. <laughs> you definitely do not look like a grandmother. Good. So where 
was your first date? Uh, uh, a donut shop. Huh? First date was in a donut shop? Yeah, well, it was a nice, cozy place to Cozy? Talk. It was not cozy. <laughs> it had these blinding fluorescent lights. <laughs> he was just too cheap to take me to a nice hey, restaurant. Hey, who paid the bill tonight? Good thing. <laughs> oh, I have an idea. What? You guys get up in there. Okay. I will, but Lori, the horse is having his dinner break. No, I just want to take a picture of you two. That's all right. I just want oh, yeah, to take their sure, picture. Okay. Yeah, come on, come on, come on, come on. I think with Lori, we don't have much choice. <laughs> okay. Woo. All right. You ready? <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Barbara, admit it. Admit what? Yes, it was enjoyable. Yes, it was a very nice evening. What do you want from me? Just acknowledge it. I mean, it was obvious to everyone in the restaurant. The chemistry between you two, I thought the whole place was going to explode. Yeah, well, chemistry was so great about chemistry. It's what got us into trouble in the first place. Well, thanks very much. Barbara, I know that you like him. Of course I like him. He's a very attractive man. He's, he's a very nice man, but if you think I'm going to fall in love with him, forget it. It, it, was, it was nostalgia. It was just nostalgia. Whatever you think was going on there, chemistry, cosmic attraction, it was nostalgia. I'm not buying it. I'm not selling it. I'm telling you the truth. Yeah. I don't know what you think is going to happen between me and Larry. What kind of fantasies you have going on in your mind, but you're going to have to back off. You were in love once. Lori, had we really been in love, we wouldn't have given you up. Say you were just to call you for lunch. Just lunch. What would you say? Lori, please. You belong together. I feel it. Get in the plane. Get in okay. the plane. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thanks. I'm glad we finally... Mm. I'll call you soon. You better. Well, I'll tell you what I would do. Is I would just jump in the car and drive up there one weekend. Yeah. Just show up and ask her to lunch. Well, then you can't give her a chance to say no. Right. Right. <laughs> How's Philip? Oh, good. Tell him I said hi. Okay. Okay. Keep me posted. Bye. Oh, it's gonna work. It's working. I can feel it. You're hitting this a little hard, don't you think? No, I don't think so. I'm, oh, they belong together. And then you're all gonna be... One big happy family. What's that supposed to mean? It means get real. for Barbara Colvin. Larry? Yeah. Brenda? <laughs> How have you been, Larry? Fine. How about you? Barbara's out back. I'll get her. Thank you. Barb, somebody here to see you. It's Larry. Hi, Barbara. I Hi. thought you might like to grab some lunch if you don't have any other plans. Uh, maybe could we go outside for a minute? Sure. I don't think lunch is a very good idea, Larry. Oh, okay. Well, maybe you're right, you know. Maybe, uh, I guess 28 years is probably just too long. We're different people now. It was sure fun, though, the other night. It was. Yeah. Well, call me 
if, if you need anything. Well, Barbara, I just... I feel this connection to you, Barbara. I, I don't know whether it's an old connection or a new connection, but it, it's there. I, I, I can't seem to get rid of it. Of course, we're connected. We have a child together. It, yes, and that's, that's wonderful. That's a miraculous thing. But that's not what I'm talking about. Talking about something to do with Laurie, but something about you and me. I've had an okay life. You know, it's an average life. It's nothing too horrendous. Nothing I couldn't handle, but I've never been happy. And if I had to guess, Barbara, I'd say that you've Nobody's never... Nobody's asking you to guess about my life. I mean, it was my life. If you'd wanted to share it with me, you could have made that decision a long time ago. I'm sorry. wouldn't go? Why not? Thank you. Barbara, it's just lunch. I'm sure it'll... Hold on one second. Yeah. The meeting room at the Hilton has been booked until the end of the month. Oh, did you call Brad Lundquist? Yeah, he said he knows he owes you a favor, but he's got 2,000 Shriners coming in. Great. Well, all right, we'll just have to call the Marriott. Sorry, sorry, Barbara. You're not giving him a chance. I understand that, but you could still just have lunch with him. It's not about if I'm disappointed. That's not the point. No. The point is that you two belong together and you just won't let yourself believe it. She just won't go to lunch. I mean, she says there isn't any magic there. Well, maybe there's not. I mean, maybe... I don't know, maybe there was once, but... But what? I don't know. What, do you think magic just evaporates? I don't... Who knows, Laurie? All right, look, look, I know that she is your mother. But it's her life. Okay? Okay. Right. Right. Get up. Wake up. I want to talk to you. What is it? Listen, what? I've been thinking. You only get one chance to get it right in life, and I don't want us to miss ours. I don't understand what you're saying. I'm saying that I love you. <laughs> I love you too. How do you know that? I'm saying that I want to get married. I'm just trying to figure it out, you know? But I just, I don't... I don't think I'm ready. I don't think that I'm gonna be ready. I'm just, I'm not in a place right now where, where marriage feels right to me. It's not you. It's got nothing to do with how much I love you. Well, that's such a relief. Sharon and me and the divorce, it just it really tore me up, Laurie. It did. And I, I just don't think I'm ready to go through something like that again. Roy, I'm not talking about divorce. I'm talking about marriage. It's just, it's not the right time. So this whole last year, you and I were just on this train to nowhere. And you knew it no, the I, whole time. I didn't know it. I... Nope. I had no right to do that. No, you had every right to do Shut up, Roy! Just shut up. <sighs> and go home. Hi, oh, I'm Fred. I got here as soon as I could. Oh, it's all right. The post office is open for another hour. What's bugging, Mom? Usually when I drop the baby out, she's so excited to see her. No, it's got nothing to do with you and the baby. Thank God for you and the baby. 
It's Lori. Your mother's been leaving her messages the past couple of days, and she... She hasn't called back. Do you think she's having second thoughts about having mom in her life? No. I just think she's going through a lot of adjustments. Mom is so vulnerable right now. The wonderful thing about your mother is that she's very sensitive. The bad thing about your mother is that she's very sensitive. When are you going to come? Not to worry. I'll be back in time for you to meet Scott. And in the meantime, sell some antiques for us. <laughs> huh? Hey, Barbara, it's me. Laurie, where have you been? I've been leaving messages for you. Um, I've just been a little preoccupied the last few days. Sorry. You all right? Yeah, I'm fine. Listen, I... I know you were counting on me and Larry getting together, but, you know, sometimes you wish too hard for something to... Roy and I broke up. <laughs> oh, honey, I'm so sorry. I don't know what to do, Barbara. Well, I tell you what you do. You get on the first plane you can and you come home. Okay. I knew I was pushing too hard. I can't help it. It's what I do. You know, in my job, you just keep pressing and pressing until they finally give up. But I guess that's not the right approach. <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry to bother you with this. Don't be silly. I saw my mother cried on her shoulder. I guess it's your turn. My mother, I love her, she's great. I mean, she listened to me, but her and dad have been happily married since they were freshmen in college, and she doesn't know anything about a bad relationship. Well, thanks. Thank you very much. <laughs> Let me ask you something. Did you really love Roy, or did you just need him? I don't think I can tell the difference. I knew he was wrong for me. I knew there were things about him that were lacking, and, you know, he wasn't strong. And now that I don't have him, I, I really miss him. I know you do. I know. But I also know that you're going to be fine, and you're going to find somebody who is worthy of you. I don't matter weasels, you know. So, I guess Larry never called you back? Well, not like I left the door open. You could call him? I think not. Well, you could. So you did buy a round-trip ticket, didn't you? Barbara, just call him. I'm not going to have this conversation again. Please, Barbara. Do it for me. Do it for me, just to restore my faith in romance. I'm not going to call him. That's the end of it. See about that. Sorry, I'm late. It's okay. I'm surprised you're here at all. Yeah, me too. Lori's a very persuasive young woman. She wouldn't let me go to sleep until I promised I'd call you. I'm sure she's still hurting. <sighs> Apparently, this guy's been stringing her along for a year, and it's not the first time this has happened to her. Really? And you think it has something to do with her being put up for adoption? I don't know. But I just worry about her. Is that why you invited me to lunch, to talk about Lori? Well, I thought you might have some insights to offer as to why a man would do a thing like that. I'm sorry. It's okay. Uh, is this still a good place to eat? It's the only decent food in town. We came here once when we were dating. I don't remember that. Thanks. Yeah, that beat up old MG I had, you remember? You read some articles. Jeff. Hi. <laughs> um, I'd like you to meet my son. This is this is Hi. Jeff Calvin. Who are you? Larry Kellum. Nice to meet you. Um, Larry is Lori's father. 
I've heard a lot about you from your mother. Yeah, well, I wish I could say the same about you. Would you like to join us? No, no, thank you. I uh, got something to talk over with my partner. See you later, Mom. married you, Barbara. I said so at the time. You said we can always get married if it comes to that. Those were your words. If it comes to that. I was scared. I know you were. So was I. What are you looking at, Lori? I was just wondering if I could catch a glimpse of him walking down the beach or something. Do you always spy on people like that? <laughs> no. No, but if you work in politics long enough, you develop a taste for surveillance. You don't like him, do you? Larry? I always like Larry very much. I just don't trust him. Well, he's changed since you knew him. I'm sure that's possible. I guess I'm still a little protective of her. I don't want her to go through anything like that again. So... It was hard for her, giving me up. I um, offered to be there when she handed you over to foster care. I wanted to. She wouldn't let me. She drove over to my house afterward. She wasn't crying. She was trying so hard to hold everything in. I asked her if she wanted a drink. She said yes, that was it. Stopped drinking for ten years. You ever see whales out here? Mm, sometimes. Yeah. It's the right time of year. Yeah, I gotta take a whale watching one of these days. Oh, you'd love that, yeah. Whatever happened to the MG? Oh, the MG. Huh. I had to sell it. It's too bad. It was a real classic. It was a torture chamber. Had to be a contortionist to make out in that thing. <laughs> Have you ever told Laurie that she was conceived in a British sports car? I think not. We ought to allow her a little dignity. <laughs> this feels very strange, Larry. stuff out by the time I got back. Not that he kept that much there anyway. Just his shirts and some lens cleaner, all his stupid Tom Clancy novels. She wish I could stay a few more days. I can't. I got too much work to do. I'll be fine. Well, you know it is going to take a little while. You're hurt and you're angry. I know. I'll be okay. Listen, I have an idea. I would love for you to spend Christmas with us. It is an incredible time of year here. You know, all, all the boats in the harbors, they put lights up on their rigs, and sometimes if it's, if it's cold enough... Barbara, I spend Christmas with my parents. Well, of course you do. I'm sorry. It's okay. No, don't be sorry. I love spending time with you. I saw Larry yesterday. He said you all had quite a walk down the beach. Yes. He wants me to meet him in Boston. Meet him? Like, for dinner? Well, I think he had a little more than dinner in mind. You're going to meet him, right? I don't know. Get in the car.
say. It's a nice suit. Thank you. It's new. Yeah? Did you buy it for tonight? Yeah. Two summers ago, Philip always wanted to visit the Alamo. He, he loves history, you know, he gets a big kick out of old forts and battlefields and stuff. See the coonskin cap? He wouldn't take that off for a week. Must have been hard for you. Now, from time to time. At first, it was pretty tough. Getting my mind around it, you know. I went through a pretty dark period right after he was born. I was uh, angry about it, scared. About what? Well, I thought that I wasn't strong enough to handle it. The thing was that, that Philip thought I was strong enough, you know? Here was this little kid totally trusting me not to flake out. So what choice did I have? Where'd you get the coffee? You slept through room service. I thought you were going to be an early riser. Well, oh, oh. I'm sorry to disappoint you. Hmm. Do you realize we've never done this? Hmm? Slept together. What? Well, we've made love, but we never slept together. <laughs> well, it's hard to sleep in an MG. So. <laughs> Rusty old folding chair of his while I did the cooking. 
Would you ever consider getting married again? No, I'm having too much fun being a crusty old widow. <laughs> what do you think, Grin? What do you really think? I mean, I think he's aged fairly well. No pot belly, no false teeth, no hair growing out of oh, his ears. You're hopeless. <laughs> Same old Larry, as far as I can tell. Uh, Dad, I believe this is your department. Just a second, Miss. <laughs> Nothing first. ABJ, go long! <laughs> I think we have a slight industrial accident. You gross jungle, I too. You look like you're a pretty enthusiastic uncle there. Yeah, yeah, until it comes to changing diapers, then it's, uh... Then she's back to Don and Scott. Boy, look how glassy this he is, huh? Yeah. You do much fishing? Yeah, every now and then I, I go out for some blues. Yeah? Maybe you and I can try our luck sometime. Sure. Okay. I'm gonna get a beer, you want one? No, I'm fine, thanks. You sure? Yeah. I'm okay, thanks anyway. Are saying. I know what the networks are saying. Now listen to what I'm saying. His position on trade has not changed. No. That's good. Yes, I grant you that it appears that way. That's because he's responding to the report. Hold on, hold on. He's on the other line. Senator, I've got Darren Hatcher on your line and he says, oh, hi, Barbara. Yeah. I'm in the middle of a firestorm here. Can I call you back? Yep. No, no, tell me. What's the surprise? You're kidding. Oh, Barbara! Oh, that's so incredible! Yeah! Wait, 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 when? When? In a month? Well, of course I'll be there. Yes! Oh! <laughs> I did it! What is it? What's going on? My mother and father are getting married! <laughs> Anybody ready for chocolate mousse? Oh, Mom, did you make that? I certainly did. Mm -hmm. What is the occasion? I just want to do something special for my family. Mm -hmm. Well, that pot roast was pretty special. But if you don't think it was enough, I'm not complaining. Well, then you better pass me those bowls. If I'm not mistaken, that past glass punch bowl comes directly from the shop. Mm -hmm. It is borrowed, and the owner knows where I live. <laughs> right. Mm. Right? Mm. Whoa. Oh, that's oh. good. Actually, it is sort of a <laughs> special occasion. Um, Larry and I have decided to get married. Well, 
mom. That is great. That is really great. Well, I think so too, Barbara. Really? Of course. Well, I, for one, am not surprised. I mean, you two were pretty cozy at the beach the other day. It's just a little fast. I mean, you've only known him for, like, a very long time, honey. It's, it's just going to be a small wedding. You know, we're going to be very casual. May we ask when this might be? Next month. Jeff, is this, is this a little... No, it's fine, Mom. It's just... That's pretty fast. Mom, even if you have a casual wedding, I mean, a month isn't a lot of time to plan it. Well, your sister's going to help, and she has a lot of experience with caterers, people like that. Well, <clears throat> I'd like to propose a toast. To Mom and to Larry, may they be very happy together. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you. That was very sweet. It was very sweet. It wasn't very enthusiastic. I'm sorry, it's just a... So what? What is it? Well, I mean, we just met the guy, you know? I like him and everything. It's just that it would be nice if we could have a little time to get used to the idea. We are kind of in shock, a little. I, I understand, I'm, and I'm sorry. It just seems as though we've wasted so much time already. What is it? Nothing. Jeff, what? You, you just dropped this stuff in our laps. You know, by the way, Dad and I are getting a divorce. By the way, you've got a, an older sister that I, that I never told you about. By the way, I'm getting married next month. I mean, it, it's like we've got this whole new family all of a sudden. And Jeff. I, you know, I could never figure out what was wrong with the old one. So, so what do you want me to do? Do you want me not to marry him? No, no, of course not. I mean, for, for me to have a little bit of happiness, is there something wrong with that? I, I think we should talk about this some other time, like on Oprah. <laughs> no, Brenda, I think we should talk about it now. If somebody doesn't want me to marry Larry Callum, I want to know about it right now. Because Larry is the love of my life, and I missed the opportunity to marry him a long time ago. I have been in suspended animation. Suspended since. animation? And I just think... Mom, think about what you're saying. It sure didn't seem like suspended animation to dawn on me. I mean, that was our life. Well, I guess that explains it, then. Explains what? Why I never felt like you were really here, Mom. Why it always felt like a... Part of you is missing. Excuse me. You just needed to vent a little. He's fine. He has to have been feeling this way for years. Mm -hmm. I can't believe I didn't see him. Barbara, don't mother. start. It's hard enough being a, a blushing bride without being a grief-ridden mom at the same time. You're not exactly thrilled either, are you? That's not true. I'm very happy for you. I can see it on your face. You're beaming. Look, Barbara, I'd love to be all a Twitter. I'm trying to be. I'm just a little wary, okay? I picked you up off the floor once, but I'm getting too old for all that heavy lifting. Now, Rebecca, your price includes staff and clearing, right? It's full service. All right. And you provide the tables and chairs. No setup fee. No, of course not. Everything's included. Just checking. Okay. We'll see you Saturday. Pray for sun. All right. I'll be here at 9. Congratulations, Barbara. Thank you. You're a pretty tough negotiator, young lady. Well, I learned the hard way. Mm -hmm. Hi. Hi. Mom, How you know Judge <laughs> Nice to see you, Elaine. Listen, Larry called. He's going to be a little bit late. So, you know Don, and this is Lori. Yes, the famous Lori. <laughs> How do you do? Nice to meet you. I'll get it. If that's the florist, I need to talk to him. Okay. Hello. Yes, she is. Just, uh huh? One second. Yeah, it's for you. Hello. Hi, Mom. Are you 
here? Um, we were thinking Good. about having the ceremony out on the lawn, mm -hmm. weather yeah, permitting. Just give me oh. room number. Your game, so am I. <laughs> I'll call you back in about ten minutes. Okay, thanks. Barbara, can I talk to you outside for a minute? Sure. Excuse us. Excuse us. One minute. Do you want some coffee? Some. Good. Okay. Thank you. Now this is totally optional, okay? What? Remember I told you Dad's an oceanographer? Well, they're here at a conference at Woods Hole about benthic organisms. Benthic organisms are his specialty, whatever they are. But your parents are in Massachusetts? Just for a few days. Why didn't you tell me? Well, I didn't know if you wanted to meet them or not. I didn't want you to feel uncomfortable. I would love to meet your parents. Really? Yeah. Well, I was thinking that you and I and Larry could go into Boston tomorrow and meet them for lunch. I would consider it an honor. Well, a benthic organism is simply a creature that lives on the bottom of the ocean. But if you're talking about benthic epifauna, which is what this conference is all about, then you're talking about something much more specific. Larry, please, don't get him started on epifauna, Dad. He asked, Lori. <laughs> We're so thrilled to hear you're getting married. Lori told us she wouldn't let up on you two. That is true. She was relentless. <laughs> so, um, what kind of wedding are you two having? Oh, just small. We're going to do it right there at the house. Oh, hey, listen, would you two like to come to the wedding? Oh, that's, that's very kind of you. We'd love to. Um, Gordon and I both have to get back to San Diego as soon as the conference is over. The work is really piling up. Dad, did you bring the tapes? Yeah, I sure did, honey. Um, I used to take a lot of home movies when Lori was growing up, and uh, I finally got around to getting them transferred to video. Well, I guess it's a kind of wedding present. I made copies for the two of you. Oh, thank you. That's very nice of you. Very thoughtful. I, I kind of uh, like to say something as long as we're all here, but I'm not exactly sure how to put it. You know, um, Lillian and I couldn't have kids. And when we got Lori, well, it, it's just the greatest gift you can imagine. Um, she's given us so much love, and, and we tried our best to be good parents to her, too. So I just wanted to say to you, Barbara and Larry, we owe you more than we can ever express. That's me when I was reading my first book by myself. Oh, and this is the Christmas party. We had the neighborhood Christmas party at our house. Oh, and that little boy right there, see him? Mm -hmm. That one. I had the biggest crush on him the whole time I was growing up. Now he owns a software company. He's worth about 20 million bucks. And, oh, typical dad. He's got this all mixed up. This is my senior prom. Excuse me. Barbara? Yes, sir. Barbara? Barbara! Barbara? Come on, Barbara, what's wrong? You don't know. Can't figure this one out, Larry. Yes, I, I think I know. She's our huh? daughter. Our daughter. That should have been us. I know it should have been us, but we made the best decision that we could make at the time. Think how lucky Lori was to have Gordon oh, and Lillian. No, no, think no. Let's think we about were. something else. Let's think about what it would have been like to have been there at that Christmas party. To have been there for her senior prom. Let's think about that. I know, but we can't change the past, Barbara. You two know what you've taken from me. You could have, you could have fought. You didn't. You didn't fight to keep her. You didn't fight to keep me. And now somehow you, you've come back and you've made me forget it all. I can't forget about it. I don't it. want you to forget it. I can't I don't want forget you to it. Forget it's always it. going to be there. Every time I look at you, all I'm going to be able to think about, all I'm going to be able to think about is what we can't have. What we've missed. I don't understand what you're saying. I'm saying we only get one chance at it after all. And we blew it. You all right? Yeah, I'm fine. Where's Larry? I don't know. He's probably driving back to Boston. Why? What happened? 
It's over, Lori. And I don't want to talk about it. What's over? You mean the wedding? Yes, the wedding. I don't understand. I'm sorry I got your hopes up. I know you were counting on this. Yeah, well, you, you can't just call it off. Yes, I can. Yes, but Barbara, you're perfect for each other. You know that. You know that. Stop pushing. It isn't going to do any good. Look, I, I can't make all of your wishes come true. I'm not your fairy godmother. I'm just your biological mother. Listen, Barbara, I was thinking about how you must have felt last night, and I'm sorry. I should have been more sensitive. But I just want to share my life with you. I... It isn't about last night. It isn't about you. It's between me and Larry. Oh, come on. I'm the thing that's between you and Larry. I mean, that's the way it's always been, hasn't it? Everything's going along fine for you, and then I just happen to come along and get in the way. You don't understand. I was only thinking what was best for you, Lori. What was the reason, anyway, Barbara? Couldn't find a nice enough apartment. The reason you gave me up is because you didn't have the nerve to keep me. Call her and tell her that I had a little change of plans and we will not be needing her anymore. I appreciate it. Okay. And uh, do it today if you don't mind, because we have to give a little notice. Caterers can be very prickly. Sure. Look, Lori, when you first showed up, I should have been more welcoming. Yes, you should have. I mean, excuse me for being conceived. Really, it was very thoughtless of me to just disrupt your happy family life. I'm sorry, Lori. Well, I guess siblings are entitled to a few misunderstandings. You think Mom's okay? Oh, I think she'll pull through this just fine. She's a very selfish woman, and that will help her a great deal. Here's your warm-up. There. Thank you. Lori, let me tell you something. Mom's never been happy. She's never been complete. All the time that I was growing up, I thought that she was running away from something or that she was looking for something and she just couldn't find it. And I used to resent it. I mean, hell, I still resent it because I feel like she missed out on seeing what was right there in front of her. I guess if you have to give up too much too early, that kind of thing can happen to you. I 
else did you say? I said, forgive me. Forgive me, Lori. out there on the beach you didn't sleep on the beach did you no i went to a motel i left my suitcase in your house can i come by and pick it up Sorry. She's fine. She's back at the house. <laughs> Poor kid. We did it to her again. I was so nervous that night at the restaurant when I was waiting for you and Laurie. I got there about half an hour early and I ate <laughs> 50 breadsticks. And then I, I looked up and I saw the two of you walking in together. Side by side. Yeah, I mean, I was so nervous, I, I was ready to jump out of my skin, but... I was so proud. I mean, we had made her, Barbara, you know, we created her, you and me. She was us. Why didn't I feel that way 28 years ago? Anyway, I'm not fooling myself, Barbara. I know the past is gone. I know we can't have her have it back. I know we can't have Laurie's childhood back. I know that. There's no second chance at that. Maybe we just weren't meant for each other then. Maybe it's taken us this long to grow up enough to love each other. But I do know we're meant for each other now. about family. I look at all of you and I see a wonderful blended family. In the marriage ceremony it is traditional to talk about those whom God has joined together, but I don't think I'm being irreverent when I say that this time God had a little help from a very determined young woman. <laughs> she has helped to remind us all that love transcends time. And that the things that pull people apart are often the very things that should bind them together. Barbara and Larry, it is now my privilege to say the words I know you've been waiting so long to hear. I pronounce you husband and wife. Okay. 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 Here we go. Here we go. No. Not 
taking any chances with this one. <laughs> I love you. I love you too. I always, always have. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> bye. Oh, bye. Yeah. Okay, I'll see you. You take care of everybody for me, all right? Oh, all right. Of Movie Max's cutting edge triple bill on Saturday night, Richard Jobson introduces The Tango Lesson, directed by and starring Sally Potter, the British filmmaker who made the highly acclaimed Orlando. In the title role next today is Gwyneth Paltrow as Jane Austen's meddling minx Emma at three.